Hello and once again, my name is Teacher JV and welcome to another session of our discussion for Anatomy and Physiology. So this time we're going to talk about your chapter 14. It's all about the lymphatic system and immunity. So this is the last chapter that will be included for your examination for the semifinals. So are you guys ready? Okay, so let's go. So before we, we talk about the functions of your lymphatic system, your lymphatic system is actually a network of tissues, vessels, and organs that work together to move a colorless, watery fluid called your lymph, okay? Back to the circulatory system in our bloodstream. And with that, we're going to start with the functions of your lymphatic system. So it says here, for the fluid balance, okay? So as just described, your lymphatic system collects excess fluid that drains from cells and tissues throughout your body and returns it to your bloodstream, which is uh, then recirculated uh, through your body. Okay, so we have here your interstitial spaces. Uh, these are the fluid-filled areas that surround the cells to a given tissue, also known as your tissue space. Okay, now if this fluid will remain on the tissue space, your edema will occur. Edema in layman's term is what we call the manas. Okay, now... The water will enter the lymphatic capillaries and will be called as your lymph, the one that I mentioned a while ago, which eventually return to the bloodstream. Okay, and with that, there's going to be a fluid balance in our body. Next one here is, it's about the fat absorption. Okay, so the lymphatic system absorbs fat and other substances from the digestive tract are through your lymphatic vessels known as your lacteals. Um, it appears to be whitish in color because of its lipid content, which is your, your chyle, okay? And the third um, function of your lymphatic system here, it's all about the defense. Now, foreign substances are being filtered from the lymph by your lymph nodes and from blood by the spleen. Okay, I'll repeat that one. Uh, foreign substances are being filtered from lymph by your lymph nodes and from blood by your spleen, thus helping our body combat infectious disease. Okay, so uh, functions of your lymphatic system for fluid uh, balance for fat absorption or lipid absorption and also for defense okay i hope this one is clear and let's move here now you can see this uh this diagram or this illustration on your book this is the lymphatic system and lymph uh, drainage okay as you can see here uh, majority of the lymphatic organs can be seen here in your tonsils Okay, as well as your thymus on this area, your spleen here, and then your lymphatic vessels. Okay. And here on the second picture, this one, the letter B, this is the um, the lymph from the uncolored area. Uh, this one. Okay. So the lymph here on this uncolored area uh, flows into your thoracic duct. Okay, it will flow in your thoracic duct before it will enter your blood. Now, this colored one, okay, the colored one here, um, area drained by your um, lymphatic duct. Okay, I'll repeat this one. Uh, the, uh, the uncolored one, it will be drained to your thoracic duct. Well, the colored one, it will drain to your lymphatic duct before it will enter the blood, okay? Now, let's move here. So, here, these are the lymphatic capillaries and vessels. So, your lymphatic system, uh, they ca uh, carries fluid in one direction from tissues 
to your circulatory system. Now, fluid moves from blood capillaries into your tissue space or your interstitial space. Okay. So as we can see here in your uh, illustration, your lymphatic capillaries, this one here, uh, the lymphatic capillaries, these are the tiny uh, ended vessels. Their fluid moves easily into and uh, into in mostly they are found in your tissues. They join to form your lymphatic vessel here. So this one lymphatic capillary, they will join to form your lymphatic vessel. Your lymphatic vessel or lymphatic vessels resemble small veins where lymphatic capillaries join in one way valve. As you can see here, there's a valve and this is always one way. Okay. And as you can see here on the upper side, this one, this is your right lymphatic duct here. Uh, the one that we mentioned a while ago already. Uh, where lymphatic vessels from the right upper limb and the right head, the neck, the chest, empty. Okay, they empties into the right subclavian vein. Your thoracic duct, um, the lymphatic vessels from the rest of the body enters there in your uh, thoracic duct. And then it empties into your left subclavian vein. Okay, now moving on here, as you can see, this is the limb formation um, and movement. Okay, the fluid moves from the blood capillaries, this one here, uh, going to tissues, then tissues from lymphatic capillaries to form your limb. Now, moving on here, your lymphatic organs. So, as you can see here, you can check your, your mouth uh, to see the, the tonsils, if you can check them um there so we have uh subdivided into three parts we have your palatine tonsil we have your uh pharyngeal tonsil and your lingual tonsil so here your pharyngeal uh, as you can see here uh this is on each side of our oral um cavity okay oh i mean your palatine i mean this one your palatine tonsil this is on uh, each side of the cavity, um, in our oral cavity. That is your palatine tonsil. While your pharyngeal, the one on the upper part, this one, okay, uh, this is near the internal opening of your nasal cavity. Okay, sometimes known or also known as your adenoid or adenoids, okay? And then um, this one, um, adenoid is what we call the enlarged pharyngeal uh, tonsils. And if it's too much uh, in terms of size, it can interrupt the normal breathing. Okay. And on the lower part here, this is what we call the lingual near the tongue. Okay. That one is um, on the posterior surface of your tongue. So the tonsils form a protective ring of lymphatic tissues um, around the nasal and your oral um, cavities and pharynx. Now, um, maybe some of you already felt um, some soreness on those part of your body. Uh, maybe it's because due to some infection. Okay, if there there's too much infection on your on your tonsil area. Um, you can be subjected to tonsillectomy. Okay, this is the removal of your pharyngeal tonsils due to severe infection. Okay, now moving on here to the next one. This is what we call the lymph nodes. Okay, the lymph nodes, they're rounded structures that vary in size. They are located near your lymphatic vessels. Uh, you can see them on the groin, you can see them in the uh, inguinal or the groin area on the armpit, on the neck um, area of our body. Now, the lymph passes through the lymph nodes before entering the blood. 
and the lymph node uh, moves through an immune system is activated uh, in which the lymphocytes are being produced if foreign substances are detected by the body okay uh, the removal of microbes uh, by means of your macrophage now next one is we have your spleen a while ago we already had a discussion about this one about the spleen the spleen is the size of a clenched fist and i mean clenched fist uh, located in the abdomen it filters the blood okay detect and respond to foreign substances as well it destroys the old red blood cells and it will also serve as the blood reservoir and as you can see here in our illustration we have what we call the white pulp and the red pulp okay the white pulp lymphatic tissue surrounding your arteries while your red pulp contains macrophages and red blood cells that connect to veins okay and here if there's also like um um your spleen was severely uh, affected by infection you will be also subjected to a splenectomy this is the removal of your um spleen whenever you see when you hear the word ectomy it has something to do with removal now let's move here this is your thymus gland okay as you can see the thymus gland it is on the um superior part of your mediastinum okay so this is bilobe um gland roughly triangular in shape as you can see here okay and um, again located in the superior mediastinum uh, behind the sternum slopes growing uh this one will stop growing at the age of one and at the age of 60 it will decrease in size um your thymus gland produces and much mat uh, matures lymphocytes called your t cells okay so moving on here this is the overview of the lymphatic system you can see and watch this i mean you can read this one on your book now moving on here uh, we're going to discuss about your immunity uh, this one you already have idea what is a immunity all about you've learned this one in the past so what is immunity this is the ability to resist damage from foreign substances example your microbes the toxins and also your cancer cells so we have your two types of immunity we have the word uh, we have the innate and we also have your adaptive we're going to discuss that one later on one by one but um as a preview if we say innate these are non-specific resistance okay the body recognizes and destroys certain pathogens but the response to them is the same as the body is exposed while your adaptive also known as your specific resistance the body recognizes and destroys pathogens but the response to them improves each time the pathogen is encountered okay and with that we have this term what we call your specificity and then also your memory your specificity is the ability of adaptive immunity to recognize a particular substance while memory is the ability of the adaptive immunity to remember previous encounters with particular substance okay now let's go here so innate uh, immunity it means like this is already presence at birth this uh, is defense against any pathogen and accomplished by physical barriers chemical mediators cells inflammatory responses we're going to talk that one one by one as well and we're going to start with your physical barriers okay this is the uh, first line of defense okay this is using our physicality not to enter or at least prevent the entering of um of any foreign uh bodies in our body now we have here two ways 
with the use of the skin and mucous membrane to act as barrier. So remember, our skin is our it's the protective covering of our body. Okay, so it will serve as the physical barrier. Next are the tears, saliva, urine. They wash away the pathogens. Okay. The next one here is the chemical uh, mediator. So what are they? Chemicals uh, that can kill microbes to prevent their entry into the cell. I know you're already familiar with this term because we've already learned this one from the past, the lysosome. Okay, usually they can be found in the tears and saliva and they kill bacteria. Okay, mucous membrane prevent entry of your microbes. Okay, well, here, uh, this one, we've, we've talked about your histamine already before. So this will promote inflammation by causing vasodilation. Okay, remember, histamine promote inflammation by causing your vasodilation. And we also have here interferons. These are the protein that protect against viral infection by stimulating surrounding cells to produce antiviral proteins. So that is your interferons how about the cells okay here um this one is already previously um uh, discussed as well about your wbc your uh, white blood cell or your thrombocytes uh produced in the red blood uh, red bone marrow and lymphatic tissue that fight your foreign substances so we have here what we call the phagocytic cells which we already discussed as well and remember the term phagocytosis. This is ingesting or drinking of uh, foreign substance in the cell. Okay. So example here are the neutrophils and macrophages, which we discussed um, last time as well. So these are just a quick review or further um, knowledge about these terms that we already talked about. So our neutrophils here first to respond to infection, but dies quickly. Okay, remember the one? The neutrophils, they're the first to respond to any infection, uh, but they die quickly. While your macrophage um, or macrophages, they are monocytes. They leave a blood and enter the tissue, can ingest more than your neutrophil. Now, protect lymph in the lymph nodes and blood in the spleen and also in the liver. Uh, given specific names for certain areas of the body. For example, the macrophages that you can see in your lungs, we call them as your dust cells. In the liver, we call them your kaffir cells. And in the central nervous system, they are your microglia. Okay, so remember those terms, dust cells, kaffir cells, and your microglia. Moving on here, we also have what we call the basophils. These are made also in your uh, red bone marrow. They are mutil and um, uh, they leave blood and enter infected tissues and they can release histamine. What is again the histamine? It is or it promotes inflammation by causing your vasodilation. Okay, so your mast cell here can, uh, th this is also made in the red bone marrow. This is non-mutal, uh, found in the skin, lungs, in your gastrointestinal tract your urogenital genital tract and can release your leukotrienes, okay? Next one, your eosinophils, they produce as well in your red bone marrow, release chemicals to reduce inflammation. And we have your natural killer cells here, the type of lymphocyte produced in our um, red bone marrow, recognize classes of cells such as the tumor cells or virus infected cells. They release chemicals to lysis the cell. And here, the next one is all about your inflammatory response. Okay, involves chemical and cells due to injury. It means something happened to you. There's gonna be a breakage in the skin or you are injured due to accident. Now, signaled by presence of the foreign um, substance, stimulates release of chemical mediators as well. 
Now here, well, uh, it is categorized into two. We have your local inflammation. We also have your systemic inflammation. So in local inflammation, we have here, it is more most likely on specific body part only. And in local inflammation, we have here the five cardinal signs, okay? So we have your pain, heat, redness, swelling, and loss of function, okay? So um, uh, the pain here, and then here the heat, uh, redness, swelling, and eventually, um, if it's not treated um, faster, there's going to be loss of function or your functulitia uh, and the other is your uh, your uh, rubor calor uh, there there are other terms for this mode next one is we have your systemic inflammation so what is happening here this is distributed throughout the body and it has three features the first one is uh, this is in the in your red bone marrow and it will produce your neutrophils that will eventually um, that will eventually have your um, phagocytosis okay and the next one is um, the presence of your pyrogens these are chemicals released by microorganism um, your neutrophils other cells that stimulates um, fever production okay it will affect the body temperature okay and the body temperature uh, it is being regulated by your by our hypothalamus in our brain okay and the next one here is the increased vascular permeability that can increase so much that large amount of fluid are lost from the blood into the tissues with that uh, there's going to be decreased blood volume that can cause shock and eventually it can cause death to the client okay and if we're going to look at this illustration you can see this one also in your book this is the inflammatory response so again there's going to be a breakage in the skin and then the bacteria will enter the body causing the tissue damage and then with that what will happen is there's going to be initiation of the release of the chemical mediators and then inflammation will happen with this it's going to be the uh, the result will be um, the destruction of bacteria but still if there are uh, if there are still bacteria in the body the more chemical mediators are being activated okay eventually the body will repair itself okay so moving on here uh, adaptive immunity uh, what is it so in adaptive immunity these are the defense that involves specific recognition the specific antigen acquired after birth okay unlike uh the one that we discussed about uh, ago your innate they're already present at birth but this one you will acquire this one after the expulsion of the baby to its mom's womb reacts when innate defense don't work is slower than innate immunity has memory we discussed this one a while ago uses lymphocytes are uh, lymphocytes are uh, your b and your t cells and two types of antibody mediated and cell mediated and we're going to discuss them here so we have what we call the antigen these are the substances that stimulates immune response example to the bacteria virus a pollen a food drugs and etc the foreign antigen uh, introduced from outside of the body okay um, they are being introduced um, outside of the body which can actually cause your um, allergic reaction okay uh, your self antigen here the molecule produced by person's body that stimulates immune system response so we have here your example is the autoimmune disease the self antigen stimulate unwanted destruction of your normal tissue 
uh, moving to the next one, the antibody proteins uh, the bud proteins the body produces in response to your stimuli. And we have here the stem cell um, that can be found on your uh, bo red bone marrow, give rise to all blood cells. We talked about this one um, from the previous uh, discussion that your stem cells will give rise to all blood cells, your RBC, WBC, and your platelets as well. So it will also give rise to some pre-T cells and pre-B cells. Okay, the lymphocytes here, uh, the type of the type of white blood cell uh, that involves in adaptive immunity developed from your stem cell have cell membrane proteins called your antigen receptor. So your B cell will have your B cell receptor as well as your T cell will have your T cell receptor. Now let's go to the B cells first. A uh, type of lymphocytes involved in the antibody mediated immunity originated from the stem cells, mature in the red bone marrow, and move your lymphatic tissue after mature, lead to the production as well of your antibodies. Your T cells are type of lymphocytes involved in a cell-mediated immunity, primarily an antibody-mediated um, immunity. This one mature in the thymus gland, B cell, remember, it will mature in your thymus gland and move to lymphatic tissue after they mature. Okay, as you can see here um, on this illustration, this is the origin and processing of B cells and your T cells. And they all are originated from your stem cell. Okay. Now here, this is the antigen reaction. Uh, uh, lymphocytes have antigen receptor on their surface, uh, called B cells receptor on B cells and T cells receptor on T cells, in which we uh, we've talked already. And they have your specific antigen. When antigen receptor combined with antigen, uh, the lymphocyte is activated and adaptive immunity begins. Okay, so again when antigen receptors combine with your antigen the lymphocyte is being activated and with that your adaptive immunity will start okay we have this term what we call the major histocompatibility complex molecule or mhs this contains the binding sites for the antigen specific for certain antigens hold and present a process antigen on the surface of the cell membrane this also bind uh, to antigen receptor on b or t cells and stimulate the responses next one what we have here is the cytokines uh, protein secreted by cell that regulates the neighboring cells that is what we call your cytokines example is your interleukin 1 released by macrophages stimulates the helper t cells okay looking at this one at this illustration this is the proliferation of your helper t cells so what is happening here is the after the antigen is processed and present to helper t cells the helper t cell produces your interleukin 2 and interleukin uh, interleukin 2 receptors so what will happen your interleukin 2 binds to receptor and it stimulates more helper t cell production and then the helper t cell are needed to produce your b cells now the b cells they will produce the antibodies Okay, so you can read this one uh, for further details on your book. And the next one here, uh, this is the proliferation of your B cells. So uh, also uh, read this one on your book. And we have here your dual nature of immune system. So here 
uh, the lymphocytes give rise to two types of immune responses, the antibody mediated and the cell mediated. Okay, I'll repeat, it will give rise to antibody mediated and cell mediated. Now, antigens can trigger both types of responses. Both types are able to recognize self versus non-self, use specificity, and have memory as well. Let's go here first. In your antibody mediated. So what is happening here or what is this one? Effective against antigens in the body fluids, your blood, and also your lymph. Now, effective against bacteria and viruses as well. Okay, and they use the B cells to produce antibodies. Okay, looking at this one, looking at the structure uh, of your, this is the uh, structure of the antibody. So it looks like a Y shape. Okay, a Y shape uh, overall, but here it looks like V. But uh, if you're going to look at it, it looks like a Y shape. Okay, so V or Y. Uh, your variable region, this one, this variable region here, um, this is to bind the epitopes of the antigen using the antigen binding sites. Okay. Here, the constant regions and light and heavy change, uh, change what is happening here. Uh, each class of the immunoglobulin has the same structure. And here, on this uh, far end here, this is the antigen binding site. This is the site on the antibody where the antigen binds, okay? How about here? We have what we call the valence, the number of antigen binding sites on antibody. Your antibody is sometimes also called as your gamma globulins or your immunoglobulins and we have five immunoglobul uh, immunoglobulins used to destroy antigens we have your igg igm iga ige and your igd and you can see this one here on your book uh, please read this one um, familiarize yourself about the classes on uh, of antibodies and their functions okay uh, this one is the effects of um, antibodies. The effects of antibodies, what is happening here is the inactive antigen, it will bind antigens together and the active complement cascades initiate release of inflammatory chemicals and it will facilitate your phagocytosis. Okay. Moving on here, the antibody production. Primary response, first exposure of B cell to antigen. Now B cell undergoes division and forms plasma, uh, plasma cells and memory cells. The plasma cell produce antibodies and it is usually three to 14 days to buy effective against your antigen. Persons develop disease symptoms. Your pro uh, secondary response will have your memory cells occurs when immune system is exposed to antigen that has been seen before, okay? So this one, uh, it means like the, the patient or the person already have an exposure. It's because the body is recognizing it. That is why it is called as your memory cells. B memory cells quickly divided to form plasma cells, which produce antibodies and produces new memory cells. Okay, you can check this one uh, on your book. This is the antibody production. Now let's move here to the next one, which is your cell mediated immunity. So what is your cell Im uh, Im uh, mediated immunity uh, effective against antigens in cells and tissues? Effective against also bacteria, viruses, fungi, or fungi and protozoa uses different types of T cells. So you can see here in this illustration. 
So here, the types of T cells, we have what we call the helper T cell. So what is this? This is activated here in your macrophage. Okay, help to form the B cell. And it promotes production of your, of your TC. What is TC? It's this one. Your cytotoxic T cells. Okay. Your cytotoxic T cells, these are, this is the precursor of your cytotoxic T. Cytotoxic T um, lymphocytes or your CTL. This one. Okay. The CTL or your cyto, cytotoxic T lymphocytes, they destroy antigen in contact. Okay, while your regulatory T cells or your TR turn off immune system response when antigen is gone. Okay. So again, you can see this illustration on your book. This is the stimulation and effects of your T cells. Okay, and the next one, this is your immune interactions. So the types of adaptive immunity, as we, uh, you can just go on here. So this is the type of the adaptive immunity. Uh, we have your active immunity. We also have your passive immunity. So in your active immunity here, this is more of natural response or natural exposure to antigen that causes production of your antibodies. This one can be lifelong immunity, okay? Well, here in your passive immunity, uh, transfer of antibodies from mother to child, okay? From mother to child. Example is breast milk or the placenta okay well here in the um, in the active uh, acquired immunity we have what we call the um, the artificially uh, acquired immunity okay um, these are the antigens are deliberately introduced in a vaccine okay uh, in a vaccine uh, your natural here, antigens are introduced through natural exposures. In passive immunity, we have what we call the natural also and then the artificial. Artificial. So natural is antibodies from the mother that are transferred to her child across placenta and milk. Artificial is antibodies produced by another person or an animal are injected okay so acquired adaptive immunity we have your active immunity we also have your passive immunity and both have natural and artificial examples okay and that's it for the chapter 14 of our discussion it's all about your lymphatic system and immunity so again thank you and i'll see you again next time.